I'm planning on only doing a demo because there's a lot of a lot of uh, work here and not spend uh, very much time at all looking at code. But basically, we're talking about in the uh, SP Dev Solutions um, repo, the um, multilingual pages um, solution. And so there's a big long readme in here that's going to go through a lot of what I'm going to demo today, but that's what we're talking about. And so uh, the other thing I want to just point out before I lose time on it is uh, at the SharePoint conference in a couple of weeks, um, I will be demoing this again. And um, DC Pidar from Microsoft will be giving some roadmap for Microsoft's plans on multilingual. So I just wanted to sort of give a shout out to uh, to that session, because uh, I'm sure for the people who are really interested in multilingual, that's going to give you a lot of insight to what's uh, what's happening. OK, so this is a SharePoint framework solution built on the 1.7 version of the framework. We have not up updated it yet. Uh, this was originally built for uh, the uh, Shire slash Takeda pharmaceutical merger that happened this last fall, where they had a um, a need for multilingual. And so between um, David Fellman, who's another MVP, and myself, we um, designed this solution. And then uh, I built the extension, and another guy named Scott Hillier, who many of you have probably heard of, built the redirector web part that goes with this solution. So basically, uh, once you add the application uh, to your uh, site collection, it builds itself out by adding some site columns and uh, to the site information panel. So let me go show this, view all site settings. And if we go into site columns, we can see that it adds some uh, site columns that support this multilingual solution. So you have a language folder, so which folder is the page in, which variants of the languages does uh, this page support, when was it last synced from the page that is defined as the master, what is the master translation page's ID, and if there's a redirector page, what is that URL? And then we add all those site columns to the site page content type in here so that every page in your site pages library gets those properties. And so this is done on a uh, site collection by site collection basis. And so if I come back to my home here and then go into pages library, the other thing it does is then provision these folders. Now these folders come from a tenant app property that has a JSON blob that defines the uh, languages and I'm hoping I can quickly come up with this. Whoops, that's not what I want. I want the network tab. And if I do a quick yes. storage entity, and so we're getting the storage entity, which is the language configuration. And you can see the value in here has a JSON blob that defines all the languages we're going to support in this tenant. OK. so. Shutting that down, we've got a folder for every language. And right now, this is a pretty empty uh, site collect, uh, pages library. I only have the home page in here. Um, but I also did go ahead and um, I have the all pages library where I added my property so I could see it. And then I also created a flat view so that I could see it flattened by uh, library. And that sometimes helps so that you can see what pages you have going on. So now. If we go ahead and create a new site page, you're going to get a new page. And so if I just call this PNP demo, and um, I am one of those Americans who knows no other languages other than English, or although I like to tell people I speak six languages, they're just programming ones. So um, this is an English page. And so I will put some content on there. And I'm going to save that as a draft. And then what I have down here is that the, um, the extension that we have on the page is putting a footer placeholder in here, which is this selector. And this selector shows up, or this uh, functionality shows up when the page that you are on is at the root of the site pages library. So what I can do then is decide what the master language is for this particular page and move it into that folder. And like I said, I, I speak English. So I'm going to start with the English translation. And then I'm going to say I want to move the page. It confirms I want to move the page. 
and I put it over into that folder. And if we go back here and look, we now have this PMP demo uh, page and it gets automatically assigned all the languages. And so this language variant column is something that you can create as a managed properly then. And so you can use like the highlighted content uh, web part and or the PMP search uh, web part to create a way that you can filter up uh, content to other pages based on the languages you want to show. So by default, every page gets tagged with all the languages you support. And if we come back over here, we can now see that we have this multilingual not configured um, indicator down here. And if I go into edit mode, I get a language details button. When I get the language details, I can then see, OK, we haven't started a translation of this. We are uh, identifying this page, the master translation, as English. Um, and we can get more information about this page, like um, that it's not published and who modified it and when it was last synced with the master. And then I can say what languages I want it to be in. So I can pick Japanese and German, for instance. Um, this redirector page piece, I'll, I'll show a little later, but this be basically will create a separate page in the home page or in the home uh, root of the, the uh, site pages library that has the redirector web part on it that is configured to um, to when you come to the page, it knows based on the settings, either the regional settings or the tenant settings or the user's per personal language settings and or it falls back all the way to the browser settings of which language the user wants to see. And if there is a translation that matches their language, it will redirect them to that translation. Otherwise, it will stick to the master translation. So we're going to go ahead and hit apply language changes. And um, this can take a few minutes, so fast today. Um, and so now we have some translations out there. So if I come back to the flats page, we can see that now our PNP demo, the English one, is supporting all of these languages where we have copies now for um, German and Japanese in their respective folders. And so we can uh, come back and save this page, save this as draft, we could then publish it. Um, if we want to, that's not really important right now. But then the user experience for users that come to this page um, would be that they get this selector that allows them to switch languages if they want. So it shows them what language they're in, but if for whatever reason, maybe uh, their language settings are set to English, but they're native Japanese speakers and want to see the Japanese translation, they can come down here and say, OK, well, I want to go to the Japanese translation. OK, so you can tell now that I'm in the Japanese folder here. And because I'm an editor, I'm going to edit this page. And I can now say this is the Japanese page. Um, and I could do something else to, to sort of make it stand out so that we can really see that this is a different page. And so I can make that change. And let's save that as a draft. And let's even publish that. Um, and so now we can see we're on the Japanese page, but if I come back over to the English page, excuse me, and we edit this page, we can see on the language details under the Japanese version that this version has been modified since the last time it was synced. It is published. Um, and we're seeing this new translator comments section here. So what the functionality is here is that if we want to change the English version and say, um, and, and change this and save it, and then we decide that we want to Oops, that was already open. If we want to um, retranslate it, we can then just say, you know, changed um, text needs retranslation. And that's not how you spell it. Well, that's okay. Oh, that's because it wants a hyper. Okay. So we can do that. And what will happen then is for the German page, because we haven't changed it, it actually will replace the German page. And for the Japanese page, it's going to send an email uh, to this person here uh, with the translator comments in it, letting them know that the, the, um, the trans, the page, the master page has been changed and that um, we need some retranslation. There is also the ability to re uh, replace all existing pages. So if you have a massive redo of a page, you could just override all of the changes and apply it to every single translation. 
So uh, if I apply this change, <clears throat> and it doesn't take too long, uh, and we publish, yep, I know. Uh, and then I come back over to the Japanese version, we're going to see we're, we're still in the way the Japanese version was, but if we go to the German version, we can see that it's still unchanged and that we haven't uh, really done anything with that. So if we come back to the English version one more time, and I go into edit mode, and I add a redirector page, we can see that we're going to get a URL here that is in the root of the site pages library. So I'm going to apply this change. And I'm going to wait, and I'm going to wait. This actually takes a little bit of time because it's actually using the awesome uh, code that uh, Patrick re, uh, reverse engineered to do the client pages uh, library in the PMPJS. So that was super helpful. I was um, ecstatic to see that he had done all that work for me, and I didn't have to do it. So now if I put um, this page in, we're going to see a quick blink, but then it's taken me to the English version of this page. If I put this back in here and put stay equals true in here, then the web part knows to stay on the page and I can, <laughs> donations, yes, I know, I should absolutely donate to you because that saved me a ton of time. Um, so now I can see that this web part sort of telling us what we, uh, what we, what it was trying to do, what it was trying to take us to, and we can edit it and look at what the redirects are and can see that for Japanese, it's going to try to take you to the Japanese page. For German, it's going to take me to the German page. And for everything else, it's going to, to stay, it's going to redirect back to the English page. So this is a way that you can have a link to one page that will take you to whatever language for whatever user. So if you need to have a link in like a, a navigational menu or something like that, this is a handy way to, to, to make that work so that you can get the redirects to the right pages. Uh, you can also add this web part manually to any page and, and um, and configure it, but the web, but the um, extension will configure it for you. So you don't really have to know how to do this. I just wanted to show what it was doing under the covers that this was getting created. But the users don't have to know about this. They don't have to configure it. It's all done by clicking that little slider in the extension to um, send them to the redirector. So um, where was I? So over here back over here. Uh, it's all managed through this redirector page. So as I add new translations and apply those changes, because this redirector page is here, the redirector page will get updated with the, the new translations. And as you take things off and add things on, that all uh, will just happen. Uh, so yeah, there was, I've got two minutes in, and there was one other thing I wanted to show. There is, from a code perspective, let me see if I can get up here. Um, so this is the uh, the code base. Um, we have the multilingual extension. We have the redirector. The one thing I wanted to point out on this extension is that there is on the init there is some code in here to handle some issues that are in um, in SharePoint framework about page loads across site collections. Now I, I sort of understand this was supposed to be fixed, but I am currently not seeing it be fixed. So let me just minimize this again and show I've got this second multilingual site. And you can see that it loaded here. And let me just refresh the page really quick. Um, and so it's loaded here. But if I make uh, navigate to my original multilingual homepage, you'll notice we're getting twos in here. And what we were finding is that the extension would load between two and four times on the bottom of the page. So we have some code in there to manage that. And um, and. Uh, so that's what that's for, and I just wanted to point that out.